Power BI, Power BI Pro, Power BI for Office 365. What do all these things mean? We're gonna take a look, that's coming up. Hi, I'm Adam Saxton, and I wanna dig in a little bit into licenses. Uh, some people may not necessarily care about licensing or have anything to do with licensing, but from a support side of it, we get a lot of questions on it and there's confusion that we see as part of it. To start off, let's just take a look at what options are available. So over here, we can see that we've got Power BI, which is the free option. We've got Power BI Pro and we've got Power BI for Office 365. The Power BI Pro and the Power BI for Office 365 are actually subscription items that you pay for. Whereas the Power BI free, you can just sign up and use it uh, with any type of organizational email. Let's go ahead and take a look at what this means from an actual feature perspective. So if you go to powerbi.com and you take a look at the pricing page, you can see here that we've got a, a listing of what these items actually are. And for the free versus the pro, there's actually a lot of features that are very similar to the two. Uh, where it comes down to differences are when it comes to data refresh and or collaboration. So this really talks about, are we refreshing from on-premise data sources and also what we consume from a streaming perspective. So this would be like stream analytics uh, type data. So collaboration has to do with groups, organizational packs, and those types of items. Let's go take a look at the free and what that has to offer. So let's go to start off with my free user. Okay, so from a free user perspective, I can do, um, I can create reports, I can pull in data. So how do you tell you're a free user or not? One of the things you can do is if you go up to the cog here, one thing you'll see here is from a quota perspective, we only are allowed up to one gigabyte from a personal storage perspective. Um, also, if we go to like create content pack, uh, these options, uh, when you go there, you can actually see, it'll tell you you're a free user or a pro user. And uh, the content pack piece is actually not available for free users. Go, we'll do this for my entire organization. Like I said before, content packs are a pro feature. So you may be wondering, why do I see this? We can also see that we're a free user. So how do I have the ability to do a content pack? Well, when you go to publish this, it's actually gonna tell you that you need a pro license to do this. And so you can either right here, you can click try free for 60 days, um, or from an organization perspective, you can actually go and sign up for the pro subscription. Okay, so that's a quick look at the free. What does it look like if we were that free user and we clicked on that try free for 60 days? So let's go and take a look at that user. All right, so stuff here looks kind of similar. Um, if we go to manage our personal storage, one thing you'll see here is it'll say pro trial user. Um, so that's different. The Jane Doe showed free user. John Doe shows pro trial user. Um, so those are the big things here. Uh, this user, because it's a pro trial user, can use all of the features that a pro user can use. So that includes the group feature, that includes the organizational packs, uh, so on and so forth. And lastly, let's go take a look at an actual pro user. All right, so from a pro user perspective, if we go look at one thing we'll see here is uh, the pro users have a 10 gig limit instead of the one gig limit. And if we go take a look at our manage our personal storage, we can actually see pro user here. So it doesn't say free or pro trial. It actually says pro user. Another thing that we'll encounter when working between pro and free users is if I create a con or if I create an item that uses a pro feature. So in this case, this dashboard actually uses a pro feature. My data set here is actually going through the AS connector um, through on premise data. So that is a pro feature only. So let me go ahead and share this out with Jane Doe, who is my free user. Uh, one thing you'll notice here is there is a warning here saying that this dashboard does contain pro content. And so if that user tries, to, they'll have to be a pro user to be able to gain access to it. And let me do, all right, that's shared. Let's switch users again. If I try to pull up that dashboard that was shared to me, I get that same message that the it contains pro content. So if I hit cancel here, you'll just see that we're just loading and nothing here works at this point because I can't do that as a free user. So that's what it looked like from an end user perspective. Let's take a look at what this actually looks like under the covers. Um, so I've gone to the O365 admin portal. Let's take a look at subscriptions here. So you'll notice a couple of things here. We've got Power BI for Office 365 trial, and then I've also got a Power BI Pro trial from the actual O365 subscription perspective. If we go look at licenses, I can see the three main items there. I can see Power BI Free, Power BI Pro, 
and Microsoft Power BI for Office 365. Those are associated to the given uh, items that we have available. The the free is pretty obvious. So uh, the Jane Doe user that we showed that only had the Power BI free license assigned to it. Let's go take a look at John Doe. So John Doe showed the Power BI trial. And you'll notice that we actually had a license there that said Power BI trial, or that we had a subscription that was called Power BI Pro trial. Um, the license I just had was Power BI Pro though. And if we go look at licenses for John Doe, you'll notice that Power BI Pro is not selected because they only have the free license and they did that 60 day trial, uh, which is separate from any of the licensing that still only applies to the Power BI free license, but you're getting graced as a pro user for 60 days. So if we go look at my account, so in my account, you can see that I've got Power BI Pro, I've got Microsoft Power BI for Office 365, and I've got, if I scroll down here, I've got Power BI Free. So I've got all three. In this case, from an end user perspective, Power BI Pro or the Microsoft Power BI for Office 365 would look the same. I would show up as a pro user and I have access to all the pro features. So the Power BI Pro and the Microsoft Power BI for Office 365 those are paid subscriptions. From an O365 perspective, you can actually sign up for those trials through a subscription perspective, which is how I've done it here. And those get treated as they would if you were actually paying for the subscription. So that's why my A Saxon account didn't actually show up as a trial user. It just showed up as a full Power BI Pro. All of this comes down to what license you have assigned and what features you have available as part of that license assignment. Talking about the Power BI for Office 365 features. Uh, so this is for the old service that we had. Um, there are pieces of that service, such as the Power BI Admin Center. Those are only available to you if you have the Microsoft Power BI for Office 365 license. Those do not work with the Power BI Pro license or the Power BI free license. So those are part of the old service, not part of the new service, which is the app.powerbi.com. Some of the confusion comes into uh, the mix of the old and the new. And so if you wanna use everything, you actually have to have uh, all of those licenses. You have to have the Power BI Pro and the Power BI for Office 365 if you want to still use the old pieces in conjunction with the new. Um, and technically all you need, if you wanna use the old and the new together, with one license is just the Microsoft Power BI for Office 365. Um, and then when that license renews, it'll renew as a Power BI Pro license. So to recap, we took a look at the three different license types. We've got Power BI Free, we've got Power BI Pro, and we've got the old Microsoft Power BI for Office 365 license. We took a quick look at some of the features that are enabled by way of that license and some of the messaging you can get when you don't have the right license assigned. Hopefully this helps clear some of this up. I know there's a lot of confusion around it and um, hopefully as you use it more, it will become a little more obvious uh, where those pieces fall in. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Go ahead and leave your comments down below. Tell me what you thought. Did this help clear up some confusion for you or is there maybe another approach that maybe you think of it in a certain way that would help other people? I'd love to hear about it. If this is your first time here, go ahead and subscribe. Every Tuesday I do a talk like this where I talk about the technical pieces and I, I dig into how things work. And then every Thursday, I take a look at the things that I found interesting in the last week. So I do an information roundup. And really, this is all about you. I wanna give as much as we can from the support side out to the community and share the information that we've got to help you be more successful in what you do. So go ahead and subscribe and be part of the conversation.